more on one of our top stories. A steady stream of refugees has been flowing into countries of in, uh, neighboring Ukraine. The United Nations says it's the fastest growing refugee crisis in Europe since the Second World War. For a closer look at this growing humanitarian crisis, Baba Baloch, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, joins us. Uh, Mr. Baloch, we're seeing generosity from food to cash to places in schools. So range of aid from range of countries with a range of capacities for refugees that's faced at different, uh, at different stages of need this point themselves. Uh, so the call right now for a more standardized, structured approach to this European absorption and support for refugees, this call could not come a moment too soon. Uh, indeed, I mean, the pace uh, of uh, this exodus, uh, desperate human beings, uh, civilians, uh, majority of them women and children that are leaving Ukraine is, is just staggering. Uh, now, within the 11th and 12th day, we are nearing 1.8 million uh, refugees. Uh, Europe has certainly not seen uh, this before. That's why we are saying this is the fastest growing refugee crisis uh, uh, that uh, Europe is witnessing uh, this uh, century, and rightly so, as you mentioned, the outpour of, of support, uh, compassion, and humanity that we have seen uh, within the neighboring countries of, uh, of, uh, of Ukraine um, is, is, is also something amazing. I mean, this is the best of humanity uh, that we uh, we can see, and this is how it should be when, when people are forced out of their countries and homes, this should be the approach. Sadly, uh, with the war continuing, there are more people on the run inside Ukraine and the number is going to grow. Uh, Mr. Balok, you mentioned those inside Ukraine. Of course, the EU has predicted that outside Ukraine, they're looking at 4 million refugees. Within Ukraine, the number is actually higher at 7 million. Of course, with the Russian assault there, you are not going to be able to send aid in as you might be able to do with, say, Poland or Slovakia, places like these, which are open to help from other places in Europe. Uh, so what will you do uh, for this uh, 7 million projected number within Ukraine who will be displaced, who will be equally uh, in need of help? Uh, first, on the projected number of refugees, 4 million was an estimate uh, that we uh, were looking at with the governments in, uh, in, in the region and, uh, and, and, and uh, kind of engaging with the EU and, and others. Uh, this is an estimate. And by this pace, if it continues, uh, we certainly could see reaching that, uh, that, that number. Uh, and also inside uh, Ukraine, it's very challenging. It's very dangerous. Not not only for civilians, for humanitarian workers, but still UNICEF, the UN Refugee Agency, we have been able uh, uh, to help people, not in the surroundings of Kyiv, uh, many places in the East as well, but in the West where it's uh, uh, relatively uh, safer and, and calmer. But the problem is uh, the conflict is expanding and it's affecting more and more uh, people. We are uh, taking more supplies in uh, through uh, Poland uh, and other locations. We have been able to move our, uh, our humanitarian relief supplies uh, from from Belgium, uh, from Turkey, and from Greece, and more are going in, but it's becoming more dangerous day by day. All right, let's move back to that earlier question on what other countries outside of Ukraine can do. So, of course, Poland is actually looking at tax uh, tweaks so that it, it, it gives more money to those people who actually aid uh, refugees coming in from Ukraine. Now, Poland has that capacity in terms of GDP, nominal GDP. It's ranked 10 in Europe. Uh, if we look at Moldova, which very recently asked Europe for help, asked the US especially for help as well, because it's taking in large numbers of refugees. It can barely look after its own people. Now, do you see agreement even just on the neighbours of Ukraine on who should do what? When, how much for these refugees? 
Uh, indeed, solidarity is needed uh, when we are facing a humanitarian crisis uh, at this level. Uh, uh, for Poland, the number has crossed now 1 million refugees in the last 10 days. This is a huge uh, number. The Polish people, the Polish authorities, the civil society, everyone has stepped up to, to support, but there uh, will be a, a situation. Already we are seeing those that were arriving in Poland early they knew where they had to go. Uh, they were being redirected to accommodations. Now we see more people at the reception centers. Uh, so this is all about EU solidarity and beyond as well. Everyone has to work uh, to, together. And also we see uh, when there is the will from the civil society, from the people, uh, from the authorities, a humanitarian crisis can be managed. And rightly so, as you mentioned, Moldova being a small country needs everyone's support, but this support has to be uh, done in a way uh, uh, that everyone engages uh, with, with all those countries. We cannot leave one uh, country uh, to, to look after uh, refugees. UNICEF, the UN Refugee Agency, has moved supplies into Moldova. We are bringing in more aid both to Poland and uh, to, uh, to Moldova and other countries. We are engaging with the authorities. We are helping inside Ukraine and outside. But at this moment, uh, Europe and the world has to stand united in terms of how we help the displaced and refugees. Oh, thanks for that, Mr. Baba Balov from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees.